Predictions of Declining Living Standards. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at this article from news.com.au discussing or concerns about a fall in Australian living standards if we don't find a middle ground with China. So a former top diplomat has warned the government could risk our standard of living by escalating tensions with China. Now, let's just pull that apart. Shouldn't we be concerned that the standard of living of our entire nation could be affected by our relationship to one foreign country? If we jump over here, we can see why. It's because, well, have a look at this. Look at the destination for our exports, 35% to China. Look at the source of the majority of our imports from China. And then if we look at a few other little things like international tourism, we, which is a $60 billion part of our GDP, you know, comparable to other huge export markets like coal and iron ore, a big proportion of that also comes from China. I'm pressing all the wrong buttons here. So Australia must avoid a binary choice between his hostility to Beijing and allowing it to tickle our tummies. Australia's former ambassador to China has told the National Press Club. Jeff Raby, who served as ambassador to China between 07 and 11, was critical of the government's adjustment to what he calls the most massive power shift in modern history. The former ambassador warned Australia could face significant cost to our living standards if the government fails to reject a binary choice between viewing China as the enemy and rolling over and letting China tickle our tummies. Although conceding difficulty in navigating human rights issues with China, Mr. Raby argued, You're, you are better having platforms to engage and talk rather than just be shouting at each other through megaphones. Mr. Raby singled out Liberal Senator Eric Apts for echoes of McCain McCarthyism from the US in the 50s over his lines of questions in a Senate committee. Mr. Apps demanded three ethnically Chinese Australians disavow the Chinese Communist Party, a request Mr. Raby argued implicate, implicitly questioned their loyalty, the loyalty of Chinese Australians. Senator Apps told NCA Newswire he only asked those with links to academia and think tanks to contemn the di dictatorship. He insisted he would continue to speak about human rights issues, including the treatment of Uyghurs within China, saying he did not want to go to sleep at night thinking that my comfort is built on the one million people rotting in concentration camps. Former dipl diplomats like Mr. Raby had allowed the grass to grow under their feet on the issue, the senator said. They allowed all of this to happen under their watch, so I think they may be feeling some discomfort and embarrassment and therefore like to call people like me out with cheap jabs, he said. The debate comes against a backdrop of souring relations between Canberra and Beijing. China slapped heavy tariffs on barley trade and suspended imports from some abattoirs in May after the federal government backed an independent inquiry into the origins of the pandemic. Beijing also warned Chinese tourists and students not to travel to Australia before launching an anti-dumping investigation into Australian wine. Government ministers claim their Chinese counterparts have refused to pick up the phone to them. Mr. Raby said the developments are a backlash to the government's ill-judged handling of the inquiry. He said although the need for the probe is undisputed, Beijing took umbrage at the way we went through announcing it and reacted with its increasingly wolf-warrior diplomacy and the threat of economic coercion. Mr. Apps insists, while trade with China remains possible, if the global community were to get together and say to Beijing enough is enough, they would have nowhere to go. So there we have it, everyone. Some concerns. Some concerns about, well, frankly, the human rights abuses in China, which there's a significant historical precedent of that. No one can argue that. That's pretty much fact. And is the luxury and the lifestyle afforded to us here in Australia? You know, have we become have we become fat? You know, 
suckling from the cheat of the the teat of China. You know, all of our exports that are flooding over there, our coal, our iron ore, our gold, even our petroleum, everything that's sending over. I mean, look at our coal. How much of it is going to China? 18%, 20%. India and Japan are higher. What about iron ore? China, 80% of our iron ore is going to China, everyone. That shows you why Western Australia is so dependent on that trade. What about our petroleum gas? 56%. What about crude? Oh, no, China's only 10% there. What about copper? We've heard how that's been growing. Over 40% of that is going into China. Why? And they're looking at, you know, dump, we're, apparently we're dumping that. 33% of our wine exports go to China, everyone. Every part of our economy. Aluminium oxide, not, oh, there you go. They don't even rank here. They're only 2%. What about wheat? Wheat? Oh, only 4%. What about good old wool? 72%. So you can see different parts of our economy are going to be exposed differently to the Chinese economy and their impacts on us. But overall, it's a huge portion of our exports here in Australia, everyone. And that will have a flow-through effect to other portions of the economy. We have a look here. What about cars? Where are all our cars coming from? we don't manufacture them here anymore still most of them from japan china's only 0.8 percent what about our broadcasting equipment that's all imported 57 percent comes from china the microphone i have here it was it's a road podcaster mic i bought it from an australian manufacturer because they have a fantastic reputation and i wanted to support australian businesses where do you think it's made over in china the little arm that you can't quite see in my video same thing, all imported. If you have a warranty issue, you send it back and they pretty much just send you a new one straight away. What else do we import here? What about our gold? Where's our gold imports coming from? I think, yep, PNG. A lot of that would be going to the Perth Mint and others. What about delivery trucks? Japan again? No, Thailand, then Japan. China doesn't even rank. What else? Computers. Computers necessary to every modern economy. 69.7% from China. So think about it. If all of these things either you know become more expensive, which right now with the dollar it's going up, or it's about 72 cents, so the, you know we can get more value for our money. But also our exports are less attractive. And if China's putting a major trading partner is putting tariffs on our exports, so we're not as competitive as other countries, that's going to have an issue. So we have to see here. What do you think? Do you think the quality of life? is worth it here in Australia. Our GDP growth per capita has been decreasing since the GFC. Our property prices are up through the moon, everyone. I'll bring up this chart here, you can see. Housing affordability is ludicrous. We're definitely in a K-shaped economy. You're gonna have some some groups of people that will be arguing, you know, we need to stand by our, you know, our morals and only deal with countries on a basis that we want to. And there'll be others that are going, no, 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 we can't. But you've got to think about it. How are people going to be affected by this? What parts of the economy are they in? You know, there's a reason why. There's a reason why our iron ore, you know, iron ore exporters are so supportive of China. You know, just a reason why, I wonder. So what do you think, everyone? Have you noticed your quality of life? Has it been increasing or has it been decreasing? I'm noticing the costs of goods are going up day by day, it feels. And the costs of doing construction work, the cost of renovating houses, the cost of buying property is getting tougher. So we'll have to see, everyone, where it all ends. Is this just, you know, more political, you know, posturing and rhetoric? Or is it going to, you know, will a Biden president, will that ease tensions between China and Australia? And is that going to flow through to the real estate market like a whole lot of people and spruikers are hoping? As always, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. Simply interacting with the channel, liking and sharing the content is a great way to help it grow. You can support us financially by joining the channel on YouTube or Patreon using any of our affiliate links you find down below from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from Teespring or our website where you can get the pocket squares. You can see right behind me. You can use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day.
I'll see you next time.